Let's get started. So one of the things we have to decide is what set of tools are we going to use to compile and run our programs. And to do that, uh, I'm going to give you some information to hopefully make, let you make a decision. Uh, what is an IDE? Does anybody know what IDE stands for? IDE? Anyone? OK, it stands for an integrated development environment. It's basically a bunch of tools that work well together to help you compile and run your programs. It includes something called a compiler. And this is the main item inside the IDE. And what this does is it takes code that you write and turns it into binary that the machine can understand. Okay, so if you write this, so if you write that, the compiler comes along. When you hit the compile button, it takes this code and it turns it into some sequence of ones and zeros, which means print hello. The computer itself, when it's running, can't read this. It can only understand binary. At its basic level, every computer in the world only understands two things. It understands that the light is on, a 1, and it understands that the light is not on, a 0. So every computer, when it's running, only understands 1s and zeros or binary. This binary, when it represents code that's been converted, is also called machine code. So binary is used for lots of different things. Machine code specifically refers to a sequence of binary digits that contains a program that's been compiled. So we need a tool that is a compiler to help us do the compiling. We also need some sort of editor. You know that Microsoft Word or Google Docs, those are editors. We typically want an editor that works well in combination with the compiler to help you write stuff. If you need to make changes, you can find and replace text. All those things that you typically do with an editor. So those are the two main components of the IDE. And now I want to tell you a little bit about some different IDEs that are out there and which ones are probably a good fit for you. I'm going to talk about three of them. The first one is the one that most of my students end up using, at least for starters, and that's called BlueJ. There's another one which we're going to use today on these computers called REPLIT. And there's a third one which I'm going to talk about called IntelliJ. Now, if I was to describe these IDEs in terms of cars, I would say that these two are like a Volkswagen Beetle. It works really well. It's a German engineered car. It's solid. It's basic transportation. Doesn't have a whole lot of features, but it's pretty to look at. And it'll get you from here to there, and it won't break down. This is a Ferrari. It's a lot more complicated than the Beetle, and it's designed to do only one thing. What is that, Diego? Go fast. If you want to program quickly, this is the IDE for you. Now, I'm asking you which set of tools do you want to use, one of these or these. And by the way, there are dozens of other IDEs available for Java, and you can use any of them. I'm just giving you these three as examples, right? And I'm asking you to pick. Now, I realize for some of you, you're like, well, here's the second day of class, and he's already asking us to make some like lifetime decision. It, it's not a lifetime decision. You can just go ahead and pick. If you're not sure, most students start with Blue Jay. And then at Christmas vacation time, they take stock of where they are in my class. And then they say to themselves, you know, I got an A in that CSA, and I really feel like I'm crushing it right now. Then Christmas vacation would be the perfect time to switch over from BlueJ to IntelliJ. So you might be asking, well, if this one makes you write the code the fastest, why don't we just start with this? So 
If you're interested in driving, you're probably interested in driving the Ferrari over the Volkswagen Beetle, but there's one little problem. You don't know how to drive yet. And so starting on this, can you see that learning how to drive on a Ferrari is going to have its own set of issues? Like you hit the accelerator a little bit too hard and you go slamming into the wall. So my suggestion is, unless you have some programming experience behind you, Start with one of these, probably this one, and you can switch over to this. But if you come into my class with some pretty significant amount of experience and you want to go for it, by all means, go for the IntelliJ. If you run into problems with IntelliJ in class, Mr. Sarkar is not particularly adept here, but Mr. Roth will be able to help you because he, like all my data structure students, have made the switch. When you, if you take data structures with me next year, there's no more BlueJ or Repl.it. Everyone moves over to IntelliJ by then. There are two main advantages to IntelliJ. The first, as I mentioned already, it lets you program really fast because it'll look up all the library files you need automatically. It'll do type ahead, like you type, like just type system, just type like S-O-U-T. It'll fill in the whole system out, print LN for you. So you, you can use lots of shortcuts, right? The other big advantage that IntelliJ has is that if you want to get a summer job this summer as a programmer, and many of you will be able to do that after taking this class, you need to understand that in the real world, no one uses these two things to write programs. These are educational tools. This is a commercial grade product ID that's used to write, like if you were going to write a program with like 10,000 lines in it. it it would take you too long to use these tools. So everyone pretty much uses this. There's also an older tool I'll mention in case some of your parents are programmers. They may have grown up on Eclipse. That has been sort of superseded by IntelliJ, which is frankly just more better technology. You know how that goes, right? Better technology always comes along. So we're going to ask you to use one of these. If you start off with one of these and you say, you know, I really hate this thing and you want to switch, that's perfectly okay also. All right, so, um, and you don't even have to tell me which one you're using. And one other thing, if it's not clear already, I am never in this class on a test or a quiz going to ask you a question about your IDE. I'm never going to say, oh, what's the shortcut to print, uh, print something or what sequence of keys do you press to create inheritance? The, your ID is your choice. It's like asking a carpenter what brand of screwdriver they use. It's, it's just not important for the, for the other person, the customer, okay? So it's a personal choice. You decide one of these three or perhaps some other one that you like. It doesn't matter to me. Most students start here. Okay, I'm going to ask you to pull out your computers now. And I'm going to just briefly demonstrate REPLIT. The main difference between REPLIT versus BlueJ is you saw that BlueJ needs to be downloaded and installed on your computer. REPLIT lives on the web. It's a browser-based compiler. Let's say you're at like your friend's house and you want to show them some quick little Java algorithm and their computer doesn't have... You've never done that at a friend's house, sir? No, I haven't oh. done that. Oh, anyway, uh, so let's say you want to just demonstrate like a quick little Java algorithm and the computer that they have at their house is not, doesn't have any compiler or IDE downloaded because your friend's a savage, right? They don't, they don't have any of that stuff. So then what you do is you can just go to REPLIT on the web and just demonstrate right then and there because the entire thing is contained in the cloud so you don't have to download anything into the computer. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate this for you right now. So let's go over to the REPLIT site. Can you raise your hand if you still haven't gotten the Hello World program to run? Mr. Bella, you got it to work, sir? Yeah, I got it. Has everyone gotten it to work? Mr. Burnett, you got it to work? Ms. Nuha, got it to work? Gabe, you got it to work? Okay, I'm going to move on. So that's just one of your choices, okay? If you want to be browser-based and you don't want to like if for some reason you borrowed someone's computer and you can't download stuff or whatever. This is, a, this is a very light platform. It's light. This one is what we typically will demonstrate with in class. 
And this is the high-end version if you have some programming experience that you want to really go for it. Are we all good? Okay, I'm going to 